Hello guys, uh, welcome to your first A2 exercise physiology screencast. Now, um, just a quick overview, I will talk to you about this in lessons, but um, your second lesson of the week, you're going to be focusing on energy systems. Our aim in the four lessons is, for, well, my aim in the four lessons is to get through the energy systems, which uh, a lot of people in the past have found difficult, but last year we did these energy systems in uh, this period, and the students really, really understood it. It's one of those things, uh, before, I remember, before I started teaching this, people would always come up to me asking me about energy systems so they didn't get it. If you can get energy systems going into the summer and understand it, you will feel so confident about A2 just to, due to the fact that you know that you've learned probably the hardest thing you have to learn for A2 in AS. Okay, and I think that's a really big thing. So it's really important that you know we have a good focus on these um, during the next uh, two weeks. Okay, so basically then, energy systems, in order to produce any kind of uh, work, whether it be a short sprint, uh, just moving off your chair, uh, blasting a 90 minute football game, we use different energy systems. There's three different energy systems. Okay, so basically those three energy systems, okay, are as follows. Okay, so you have the ATPPC system, which is what we're going to look at for tonight's screencast. Lactic acid system, which is also called anaerobic glycolysis, because it uses glycogen to put to get energy and then you've got aerobic system okay so that uses oxygen um, and we will go through that in your third lesson on it so what I'm going to flip between PowerPoint slides so if I said to you first of all the first thing we need to kind of uh, get an understanding of is the concept of um, what is ATP okay so basically if I said to you quickly if you just have a quick look at here adenosine triphosphate then okay uh, basically refers to um, a molecule that is basically it's, it's one adenosine molecule and three phosphates okay it's in basically it's the energy currency of the body so it's the way it's the only usable energy source that we have okay in order for us to actually move so what we have to do is we have to resynthesize it we have to get it um, by using the three different energy systems. So basically the different energy systems will give you different amounts. The first one yet, which we're going to look at today, the ATPPC system only gives you one ATP. So it doesn't give you for very long. Now if I give you a quick kind of focus on this. So what you have then is you have, if you try to, I mean, I, you don't have to write all this, but you do need to write this stuff here, okay? Uh, and you might want to put on, if I add on the top here, um, lasts for three seconds. Okay, so when you've got it, so if I put it this way, imagine you've got a, a phone, okay, a phone has a battery, okay, if you imagine that battery only ever lasts, you've got a real bad phone, that battery on your phone only ever lasts for three seconds, okay, and then every time in order to get the battery to, to work again, to give, you, to give your phone energy, I suppose, you have to charge it and stick it your charger in. That is exactly the same principle as um, an energy system, okay? So what we have is these energy systems are used to get more, so when ATP is broken down, we need to get it back again. And the different kind of uh, ways we do that, is firstly, is the ATP PC system. So I'll just show you that on here. So quickly then, we have a start point. Adenosine triphosphate, okay, or ATP, is the energy currency in the body. Um, it's made up of one adenosine, three phosphate molecules. Uh, it's the only usable energy source and it lasts for three seconds. So three seconds isn't good enough because obviously we need to do uh, uh, actions that are more than three seconds. We'll look first of all at how the ATPPC system works and how long that lakes allows us to work for. So your slide will go on for that is as follows. So we'll go on to this one. So if we just have a look then, so ATP breakdown. First up then, I said to you ATP gives you three seconds of energy. What we need to know then is how that happens. So ATP breakdown happens in the following way. So I said to you, you have one adenosine molecule, then you have three phosphates. What happens if for anything, for any kind of um, molecule to be broken down, an enzyme must be present to do that. So what happens is you have this one adenosine, three phosphate molecules, and an enzyme called ATPase, okay, or if you wanted to say ATPase, okay, comes in like so, and basically it splits, okay, so basically adenosine triphosphate, the three phosphates, okay, the ATPase will basically cause a split between the second and third phosphate, 
okay, which means energy is released, okay, because that area there is something called a high energy bond. Now, what do you need to know from that? ATP is broken down how and what, how do you write it? So basically what you're saying is adenosine triphosphate, okay, is what you start with. When you, in order to make a run or move, your first movements, what happens is an enzyme, so ATP, ATPase, breaks it down into something called ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate, which is 2-phosphate, plus P, plus energy. So basically, if I uh, flick over now onto, um, onto here, so you can kind of just see on the other PowerPoint, so this is how it would look. You would have it as so. So you would have it like this. So if you have a look on here, I suppose this is what should be on your note. So basically, ATP is broken down by ATPase, okay, which leaves ADP, because there's only two phosphates, because remember it's split in between the second and third phosphate, plus phosphate, and then plus energy, because energy is released as a result of that. That allows us to move for three seconds. Like I said, that three seconds is not enough, so what we need then is we need to now go on to our second uh, part of the ATPPC system, which is PC. Now, PC stands for phosphocreatine. Okay, phosphocreatine is stored in our muscle cells, and you can also uh, synthetically have it. So you can have it uh, via um, tablets, you can have it via powder. Okay, some people you've heard of people taking creatine, but we also have it naturally in our muscle cells. Okay, and we talked a little bit about it for uh, fast twitch muscle fibers this year. So if we go back in here, so basically the ATPPC system. Then, um, I mean, you can kind of see it from here. I might just do it on here actually. So what happens now then? Okay, from there is that. How do we resynthesize it? So what happens now is, so you should now have at the moment ATP, ATPase, ADP plus P plus energy. That's where you need to be for your first bit. Now what happens now, if I just give you a little bit of a, an insight, because ATP is broken down to ADP, two phosphates, well, because of the rise in this level of ADP, it stimulates an enzyme called creatine kinase. Now, creatine kinase is directly responsible for breaking down phosphocreatine. Okay, so basically what you have is one phosphate, one creatine, okay, then creatine kinase comes in and breaks down phosphocreatine. So what you have then is one phosphate plus one creatine plus energy. Now, what happens there as a result of that, that energy that is produced helps bind the phosphate that is spare here back on to ADP to form ATP. So basically, if you're going to kind of uh, put that into words, what you're saying is, so if I just go through it from here, you've got, start from the beginning, ATP broken down by ATPs equals ADP plus P plus energy. Okay, then because the ADP levels rise, I mean, you don't have to put this, this stimulates creatine kinase. Now, because it's called the ATP PC system, okay, creatine kinase breaks down phosphocreatine or PC. This equals P phosphate plus C creatine plus energy. And because we have this spare phosphate now, it means that now this becomes ADP, now becomes ATP. Okay, so spare phosphate. So P plus ADP equals ATP, and that gives us one molecule of ATP, and that allows us to work for 15 seconds. Okay, so the ATP molecule is rapidly regenerated from energy release from the breakdown of phosphocreatine. You need to know these breakdowns here. We will spend the lesson, I mean, your core now notes should be looking at things such as, uh, you know, characteristics of ATP, first of all. Then you should be looking at kind of, um, you know, maybe what enzyme breaks down ATP. Then you should be looking at kind of um, what, what is left after um, ATPase has broken down ATP. Okay, so what's the ADP plus P plus energy? So that's what you should be doing. There you call now questions. Do this right. I mean, this is, I've got to add stuff onto this as well. So make sure you do this and work hard on it. Okay, keep stopping, pausing, looking at it. Uh, it's a massively important. Get this first system, the rest become easy. Don't get the first one, 
it's not so easy. Now, you have got a big advantage having this screencast. I didn't screencast it last year for them, so just make sure you have a good go at the notes. You can diagram them into your notes area. You don't have to write in continuous prose, but you do need core now note questions to make sure you have an understanding that we start with ATP. The system's called the ATP PC system because the breakdown of PC allows us to resynthesize ATP once it's been broken down to ADP. All right, thank you.